Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody out this morning. We appreciate you being here. And I apologize that we have the black screen is black today. And uh, we were running a little bit behind trying to get it fixed up. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't want to connect today. And it doesn't want to be uh, cordial with us. But uh, I had some things I wanted to show you. But I guess I'll just have to talk to you about it. And hopefully, we'll get through it. But anyhow, good to have you out this morning. We appreciate you being here. It's a beautiful Tuesday here in Florida, and I hope wherever you are that uh, it's a beautiful day for you too. Amen? Amen. Don't forget our Easter service is coming up this weekend, and uh, man, we're excited about that Sunday morning at 7 o'clock sunrise, 10.30 morning service, and then Sunday night at 6 o'clock, so... Uh, I hope that you can plan on being here with us. We're going to try and fill eggs after service today. I hope that you can stay and do that. Uh, obviously, some people made doctor's appointments to get out of it. But, <laughs> but uh, hopefully we can do it. If not, we put it off to tomorrow night. Anyhow, and don't forget the ladies' luncheon will be on May the 4th. There's a sign-up sheet out back. I hope that you will uh, take advantage of that and be there with the ladies. Birthdays today. Beth Jenkins' birthday is today. Uh, no, tomorrow. I'm a day early. Tomorrow. So happy birthday today, Miss Beth. And in prayer request, we have several. Pray for our country and our military police and our, our, our police officers and our first responders. Pray for Henry Booth. He's still not doing well. And uh, he needs lots of prayers. Is Susan up there? She come back. So pray for Henry and Millie. And then uh, Joe Blakeney is having a procedure done on Thursday. He's 84, and that's Wendy and Jason has been coming right back here. That's Jason's dad. Uh, so pray for him. They're, they they went back home to Alabama for, for, for this week. So pray for them. And then Bobby Ellis, we mentioned Bobby on, on Sunday. I just left the hospital just a few minutes ago. Uh, they have now moved Bobby into ICU. So pray for Bobby and Jenny and their family. It's really, I told Kathy, it's really sad. He's only, he's 38 years old, never been sick, healthy, strong. And uh, man, I tell you, he got pancreatitis and then he got pneumonia. And then uh, his breathing is, 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 is having trouble with that. But uh, hopefully his numbers are trending in the right direction. And he will begin to have a, a, a improvement day to day. And then Ronnie Brown, uh, had uh, has been on the prayer list with cancer, and his brother passed away on Sunday. So remember Ronnie's family, Courtney Roberts. They think maybe she's got a blood clot in her leg. No, they, I'm sorry, nope. I didn't update that one. It's not a blood clot. Not a blood clot. So Courtney did not have a blood clot. We certainly thank God for that. Speaking of blood clots, you said that the preacher, what was his name? Larry Underwood. Larry Underwood has is on his lungs. Blood still got blood clots on his lungs. So pray for Larry. That's Bill Marge's old pastor. And then Bennett is having some hip problems. He wasn't here Sunday. I don't know how he's doing. Stephen Cura was here Sunday. It was good to see Stephen out. Pray for Michael Lopez and his eye as they go back to a specialist to check his glaucoma. Uh, Ernie's dad had surgery yesterday. I talked to Ernie, I don't know what time it was, about 6 o'clock maybe, something like that. And they had just gotten back to Okeechobee and said his dad walked into the into the house with a walker or a cane. And uh, we we'll certainly thank God for that. When you're 92, you're going on 92 years old, you never know what might happen. And, and then Ernie's stepson, Ryan, had to stay overnight and uh, had a, a pin put in his ankle. Then Angie's going back to the uh, doctor the 1st of April. Journey, Christy Butts' baby's having tubes put in her tubes put in her ears and her tonsils removed tomorrow. Gary Nall, that's Sheila's uh, son, Sheila and John, they, he needs prayer. And then Shirley and Bill, they continue to prayer. Bill's got to go to a, a burn, burn clinic, right? Wound care. Wound, wound clinic, my bad. Wound clinic, I knew that. Wound center. So he's, and his burn, they showed us a picture of that uh, Sunday boy. It looks terrible, but, but it is healing though. So that's a good thing. Just pray we don't get any infection. Pray for Donald with his heart issues. Sarah Lowers up in West Virginia. Teresa Gibson's daughter. Pray for her. Chris McNabb's nephew, Dennis Green, still not doing well with brain surgery. Carla D., we'll call her, is still waiting on results from her bone marrow biopsy. And continue to pray for Randy Perry 
and uh, that his bladder cyst will not be cancerous. So, and it, 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 Bill? Why she had scope tomorrow on the appendoscopy. This way? Yeah. So they're, they're running the scope down on Marge tomorrow. So pray that she'll get a good report on that, or at least they'll find out what's wrong. Amen. Uh, that, that, that's what they need to do is find out what's causing that problem. So. We need to make some prayers for Susan Sharpton. Susan? Uh, yeah, she'll be able to detail later. But okay, so pray for Susan. She's going to be able to come back and see us. Oh, don't tell me that's so sad. Pray for Susan and Ronnie. Oh, that just breaks my heart. Hmm. Well, you can tell me about it here after a while. But uh, did I leave anybody else up, honey? Barb. Barb's not doing well. Um, pray for Kylie. She has an infected tooth, and she also has to go to the doctor. She's not feeling well. Okay, for little Miss Kylie's got an infected tooth and not feeling well. So we pray for her this morning, too. So remember all these and remember, the prayer list is coming out now on Wednesday, so First Lady will get that out to you tomorrow, be an updated prayer list. So if you've got anything to put on that, let her know today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the day, for your blessings. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today, Lord, and study your word. I just pray that you help us, Lord, to try to be a blessing today as we share some thoughts and some Bible verses and talk about some things today. And Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you'd help us, Lord, to have a open uh, mind to your word, be receptive to it, and Lord, begin to be the Christians that you'd want us to be. Lord, bless all these on our prayer list today. Lord, so many people in need and in trouble, and Lord, we pray for every name that's been called out, every person that's on our prayer list. Lord, may you be near unto them and help them today. And Lord, we pray that as we get ready to go into the services this weekend, Lord, that you'll help us, that we'll see visitors come out, unsaved people come out, and Lord, we'll see people saved. And Lord, we just ask you today to to help us today, Lord. We pray help our church, help us with all we got going on, the permits and all that. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that your will be done in our hearts and lives. And again, thank you for these people that are out today, those people that are online, and those that will be joining us later watching the replay. And Lord, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, there's Bill Maher coming in. Who said Bill wouldn't be here? There he be. All right, we're going to talk to you today. I wish I had the screen up, but I couldn't. Just for some reason, the screen, uh, we had trouble with it a couple weeks ago, and got trouble with it again today. But anyhow, I want to talk to you today. It might be a smorgasbord of a couple of things before we get finished up. But really what I want to talk about is the Hallow Prayer app. The Hallow Prayer. How many people knows what that is? Have you seen that? Have you seen it advertised? It's on TV. It's on on the, uh, social media, it's about everywhere you go. But when I think about that, before we get into that, let me tell you, if, you, if, you, if you're marking this down, we will not be having TMT on April the 8th. No. That's not... Is it the 9th? Okay, my bad. April the 9th then. Uh, you say, why? Because the solar eclipse is happening and we're going to go in and lock ourselves in the house and pull the blinds down and shut the, shut the lights off and not come out for three days while three days of darkness comes over the, over, the, over the earth. I hope to talk about that either today or tomorrow or next week. There is so much foolishness out there about this solar eclipse that people, that people are taking advantage of it. And sensationalizing. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, they're putting it in. They're putting it into the tribulation period. They're putting it into the fifth seal. I told Kathy, I said the fifth seal has nothing to do with. It. I mean, this has nothing to do with that. And people are sensationalizing this thing. And it's it, it almost. I told Kathy last night. She and I were talking about. It. I said it's almost like Y two K. Remember when we yeah, lived through Y two K? That we didn't think we were going to live through it. And uh, they, they hyped it up and sensationalized it. But I, I, was on, I was on looking on social media, and I'm getting sidetracked, and I don't mean to, but we were looking on, on social media yesterday, and almost everything I was looking at is about the solar eclipse. I saw one person that was given a, given a basically a Bible answer to what was going on. The rest of it was false. And it's crazy. And you've got these women on there that's claiming that they've had these visions from God. And I mean, it's cra- I mean, it's crazy. It's frustrating to me 
Because this is what I've told you ever since you've known me. This right here is where you get your truth. And people sensationalize and twist scriptures and try to make money and make a name for themselves with stuff like this is what's going on. So, uh, you know, they're, they're saying the rapture is going to happen on the 8th. I mean, it's just, I mean, it could happen. But it could not happen. And all this stuff that you're talking about. Anyhow, I may just do a lesson on that because I feel like we need to talk more about that. But anyhow, we're not be having TMT on that Tuesday the 9th because of the, no, not the solar eclipse. I, I keep forgetting this. Kathy's birthday is on the 8th, and we're going out of town for a couple of days, and I'm taking her out and celebrating wow. with her. So uh, yeah. taking care of my baby. So we're going to, we're going to do that. Also, also we're soon, as soon as I get off these current events, there are so many crazy current events that I can't get off of them. And But as soon as I get off, I'm going to be starting our next discipleship lesson on the Holy Spirit. That'll be a good lesson. Amen. Because that's another topic that's really, wow, misconstrued and misunderstood today is when you talk about the Holy Spirit. So we're, we've got that one, getting it queued up and be ready to go. And I don't, it won't probably won't be next week. Then we'll be off a week. So it'll probably be the week after that, hopefully, unless we get, unless something else happens in current events that we can't get off of. I told Kathy last night, and I wish I had this up so you could see it, and I realized something yesterday as I was scrolling through and looking at all this stuff, all this garbage, that false prophets have always outnumbered true prophets. Read the Bible, Old Testament. Elijah went up against, what, 800, 850 false prophets, 800 and some to one. David went against Goliath, won against Goliath. Micaiah come in and prophesied uh, to the kings of Judah and, and Israel, and all the other prophets told him to go to war. Sure, go to war. God's with you. And Micah, Micaiah said, "No, no, you're going, you, it's not going, not going to work." Man, they slapped him because he, he said, "You always tell me bad things," but he said, "I'm just telling you, just telling you what the Lord says." So it seems like the the false prophets they have a bigger platform, they have more followers than the true prophets have ever had and it goes the same way with preachers today that uh, we've got we've got more false preachers than we do true preachers would you agree with that it, 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 you know there's, a, there's something about it but today let's talk let's talk more about some of the crazy stuff going on in the world because there's just so much deception going on and today i believe it's safe to say again that false preachers outnumber true preachers Wow, I, I wouldn't even begin to put a, a, a number on that. But it, when you and you you know we've had a couple big name preachers that have gotten in trouble in the last and just in the last little bit again, and we're seeing that. And you know what I, I you know I t I shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna say it. I'm online, but I'm gonna say it here. It's when it's, it, it takes me back to when Jim Baker and, and, and Jimmy Swaggart fell. I pray God does reveal everything about them. If they're if, listen. It, if they're involved in all this stuff, God God needs to just judge them and get them out of the ministry. And if if that's what it is, but man, you we've got all this this TV evangelism and 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 internet evangelism with these false preachers, these mega churches, these preachers are taking advantage of people, sexual misconduct. I mean, it's crazy. It's just it's it's just crazy. It's it's, it's it, you know. I said Sunday night as we were studying Revelation 17 on mystery Babylon religion, and it's everywhere. And and I know some of the stuff I talk about, it, you all tell me, well, I don't know anything about that. I've never heard about that. And thank God that you haven't. But if you're, if you're into current events and you're on, on social media and you're on the Internet or you're on the web and you're looking, that stuff just comes up. And it, it's just crazy. So... If you if you didn't hear Sunday night's Revelation 17, as we talked about mystery Babylon religion, you ought to go back and watch it on YouTube. Pull up on my YouTube channel and watch it. Maybe you need to go back and watch it again because, like I said, it's everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere. Candace Owens. Anybody know who Candace Owens is? Candace Owens is the black lady, the political lady, uh, the re Republican, conservative, came out with a a statement that it, it just it, you know it shows how much 
mystery Babylon has invaded people's thought processes, and it's, it's everywhere. Probably you've got it and don't even know it. Maybe like a maybe like COVID, you may have it and not even know it. But uh, anyhow, you need to go back and watch that, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that again. But anyhow, today I want to talk to you about that sha- shallow. That would it is a shallow prayer app. I guess that would be a good name for it. Not shallow, but hallow prayer app. Now remember hallowed, remember Jesus, we know that word from the Bible. Jesus said when we, you know when he teach us how to pray, hallowed be thy name. It means holy, set apart, sacred. So when we got this hallow prayer app that came out, and again I should have talked about it some time back, but you can see it been advertised everywhere. Uh, I was going to show it to you if I could have gotten the, the screen to work and let you look at it. But anyhow, so you know, it, Mark Wahlberg, anybody know who Mark, Mark, Mark Wahlberg is? Of all people to promote a hallow prayer app. Uh, Jonathan Rumi, who is the guy who plays Jesus on The Chosen, that I talked about him a couple weeks ago. By the way, Wahlberg is the devout Roman Catholic too, uh, uh, they say. And then even Liam Neeson. You know, they're using celebrities to promote this. So to me, to me, it's just another of many things that's being used to deceive people. It claims to be Christian. It says it's a, it says it's a Christian Catholic prayer app to help you. It's got the rosary, help you pray the rosary. It's got some of the things we were talking about the other night on there. Boy, I appreciate you so much. You've been a big help to me on this stuff. Uh, she's a Catholic scholar, right? <laughs> So, but uh, <laughs> you have a choice. I talked. I was talking to Shirley about this. Shirley had been in Catholic schools and grew up Catholic too, but it claims to be Christian Catholic, which is not Christian. So this commercial also aired on the Super Bowl. If you watched the Super Bowl, which I did not, but uh, it was aired on the Super Bowl. You see it on TV. You see it on the internet. You see it everywhere you look. But it's ranked number one. It's the number one app. For prayer and meditation. It helps you pray, helps you meditate, helps you pray the rosary, helps you get through some of those Catholic sayings. And, and you say, well, what's up with it? What, I mean, what's up with what's up with it? Again, here we are. We're trying to use celebrities to market. And I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to use the term religious stuff, not Christian stuff. Religious stuff. And you see it, you see it in the ad, you, and, and it seems to be, it's so. It seems so sin- sincere. Mark Wahlberg is saying, "You know, let me, let me, let me pray with you." And then Jonathan Rumi, and they stop a minute, and and, and her voice is so calming and, and so soothing. And you know, just can you stop just for a minute? Give me a few seconds, and let me pray with you. It's deception. I, it's deception. And, you know, so you say, is there something behind all this? I believe there is. I believe it's more of the end times deception that I've been talking about for several years. It, we're getting permeated with it more every day, every day. And it's just, uh, Denny Reagan said he lived that life for 70 years. God bless you, brother. You got saved. And uh, But I, I think it's just more of end times deception. Amen. And uh, when we look at that, I'm going to give you a couple of verses today, and I'm going to have to read them to you because you can't see them on the screen. If you're watching, you can jot these down, maybe go back and look at them. But 1 John 4 1 says, 1 John, little John, not the Gospel of John, but 1 John, over near the end of the book, says in chapter 4, verse number 1 Beloved, believe not every spirit. There it is, black and white. But if you if we say something, if we if if we if we make a comment, oh you're judging, you're being judgment, and I'm being discerning. I'm trying to use biblical knowledge to understand what's going on. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. The Bible tells us don't believe everything you see, don't believe everything you hear, don't believe all this end times deception. Said, try the spirits to see if, they, if, if it's of God. Because here, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That was two thousand years ago. Do you think it's gotten any better? No. no, it's gotten worse as time goes on. Now I'm going to jump into into the book of Peter, which is right there close to First John. 
2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 1, says, but, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Again, there's a warning. I've given you two verses with two warnings about false teaching and false prophets. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. It's no wonder some of these people are, are crashing and burning. Verse number two, and many, listen to this, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Wow, their evil ways, their false ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Listen, they're taking the Bible and taking a little bit of truth and mixing it with a whole lot of bad and deceiving a whole lot of people. Let me say what I said when I talked about the chosen. Well, I don't know if I should say this or not. It's hard enough to get Christians to read the Bible. Do you think unsaved people are reading the Bible? Do you think they're spending time reading the Bible? They don't, they don't even understand it. They don't know what they're reading. So they're getting their information off the TV, off the Internet, off social media, off their neighbor, off their friend. Kathy had a, had a message. It was sent to her. Somebody questioned, wanting over, scared T totally to death, basically, because of this eclipse coming on April the, April the 8th. So I'm going in, I'm going to my neighbors, I'm, I'm turning the power off, I'm, I'm, I'm shutting the windows, I'm, I'm not going to turn my lights on. I mean, people are, and, and they're getting that from people on the internet. They're not getting that out of the Bible. Folks, that's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. That's not, that's stuff that's, any of that stuff that I keep telling you, that's after the rapture of the church. They're wanting to pull all that stuff on this side of the rapture, and they're, they're, me they're messing up when they do that. They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. I think this has become my favorite Bible verse. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm going to say it again, take a chance to hit modern Bible versions, which I believe is a part of end times deception. How do you like that? Now, all the modern versions have taken the word study out. Why would you take the Bible verse that tells us to study, why would you take that out of the Bible? Right. Well, the Bible wouldn't take it out, and the Lord wouldn't take it out, and Bible born again Christians and preachers wouldn't take it out. So who would take it out? Why would you change it to do your best? Do your best and study. Listen, I listen. There's a big difference when I was in school and doing my best and studying. Man, listen. I, in fact, I didn't do either one of them very good in school. Be honest with you. I got in a lot of trouble, but I, I did do my best. People say, how'd you end up in education? God's got a sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> but, but anyhow, anyhow, folks, study the Bible. Read the Bible. It's, 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 I don't want to keep using the word frustrating. Let me use another word. It's alarming. It's concerning to me that, I, that we've been on Revelation basically since we've been a church, basically on deception or end times or revelation or the seven churches or... We, we took the Revelation study. We're back into it again, and yet people just people are are are, are so readily accept this stuff because somebody on the internet, on YouTube, or social media said it. Well, they must know what they're talking. About. No, you can get on and get your YouTube channel. See Eddie, he'll set you up with one. You get on there and you start making videos. Now, if you get somebody to watch it, that's a different thing. But, uh, Verse number two, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Verse number three, Second Peter 2, 3, and through covetousness, covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. What's feigned words? What, what's it mean, feigned? Huh? False. 
False word. <laughs> and through covetousness, boy, that's a tough word for me to get out. Shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you? I don't want to get on Jesse Duplantis again, who's got the biggest house in Louisiana. I don't want to get on Joel again, who's got that big mansion and the houses here, and 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 these guys have got all all this stuff. I can remember. I can remember. I've been in Florida 10, 11 years, 15, probably 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when T.D. Jakes came on the scene. I had a black preacher that came and was with me and joined up with me. And he told me how much T.D. Jakes' suits cost 15 or 20 years ago. I mean, listen, listen I'm, all, I'm all for taking care of the pastor and the preacher. Believe me, I'm all for that. The Bible's for that. But man, there's a difference when you when you just when you when you just take advantage you, and you make merchandise of people. They're, they're, they're snake oil salesmen. Remember that? How many people used to did he, did you ever have the little bottle of stuff? I can remember when when a kid I can I love to smell it. I don't know what it was, but they'd sell that stuff and and it's like snake oil. It wasn't snake oil. I don't guess that's what they told me it was. But uh, it, 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 it was something. And man, you know, they said it was supposed to be the cure-all for everything. Just smell it, rub it on you, drink it, whatever you had to do, and it, it's going to cure everything about you. But they were making merchandise of people. Remember the, remember, Andy Griffith had a show about that. That guy that came through selling that stuff and, and uh, got in trouble. But it, 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 it happens. And they prey on people that don't know better. Guys, you got a pastor that preaches the Bible. You ought to know better. Right. Nobody, nobody should be having the Hallow Prayer app that sits under us and, and listens to us and, and watches us. No, nobody should be doing that. Wow. So and though and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Then we're going to Matthew seven fifteen. Jesus' words, he said, beware of false prophets. Three places right there in the New Testament, right off the bat. Another warning, beware of false prophets which come to you dressed like a wolf with their teeth out and their tail sharp. No, he said, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Wow. That's exactly what we're seeing happen today. Yeah. And again, I don't know what it—I don't know what it is. I don't know if people think. If you think you can't be deceived, you're probably already deceived. That's right. This is the only guarantee you have right here to keep you from from satanic deception. Is this right here? Yeah. And if you don't read it, you don't stay in it. You don't. You say, "I can't understand it." Read it anyhow. Like that old uh, th- uh, illustration I used, it'll clean the vessel out as it goes through. Keep reading it. Keep studying that because that's the only protection that you have. So beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are wave- ravening wolves. Verse number 21, Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? you got, you got the signs, wonders, and miracles movement today that's just taken over the religious side of, of, of everything. False. It's False. There are no apostles today. I don't care how many of them call themselves apostles. There are no biblical apostles today. There, nobody has the gift of laying on of hands and just commanding demons to come out and healing. It's false. Read your Bible and you know better than that. Jesus said, almost sound like he's telling us today, and in thy name of cast out devils. That, that's I, I keep telling you, that's the big thing now. You know, we're uh, devil slayers. You know, we're having, we're casting out demons out of, n- not out of unsaved people, but out of Christians. L- let me say to you again, let me say to you again, Christians can't be possessed by a demon. Right. 
if you've got the Holy Spirit of God living in you, there is no way that a demon can live in you. It's not possible. It's not biblically possible. Now you can have, you can be influenced and you can be tempted, but you can't have a demon that can come in and possess you. If that demon, think about this, and I'm sidetracked. Forgive me. Oh, no, don't forgive me. Just enjoy it or just do it. If a demon can come in and possess a Christian where the Holy Spirit of God is living inside of us, what's that saying about the power of God? What's that say about the power of God? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all three are one. They're all omnipotent. They're all om- uh, uh, omniscient. They're all um, uh, they're all powerful, all knowing. They're, they all have the same characteristics. So if God the Father is all powerful, God the Son is all powerful, God the Holy Spirit is all powerful too. Amen. And he lives in you. And you think he's going to let a demon just walk in and possess you? And you see, Pete, I saw, I saw somebody was, it was going around anointing their windows and their doors and their house to try to keep these demons out. Folks, folks, folks. Wow. 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 Many will say to me in that day, what day? It might be today's day. Lord, Lord. Man, you're having to leave right in the midst of the, I'm getting cranked up. Hope everything goes well. Let me know how things go. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And what's the one Jesus said? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Wow. So let's dig down into this hallowed prayer app for just a little bit and talk about it. And I'm not bashing Catholics. I'm not. In fact, I love them. I want to see him saved. Can I say what you said to me Sunday night? Uh, Miss Carla said she spent 74 years of her life in, in that and, and really felt like you'd been cheated, right? I'm, I've been around enough Catholics. No, Denny Reagan's on there who said he was brought up in it. Catholics don't read the Bible. They don't want you to, the priest and the Pope don't want you to read the Bible. They don't tell you the truth. Here's a lady that come been in Catholics, right? They don't tell you the truth. They keep you. They keep you in that. And they, and, and 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 you know, I can remember a lady got saved in our church, and she was a Catholic. And boy, she was. She began to read the Bible, and she would come and just sit and talk to me. She was just. She was blown away. She said, "I went to Catholic school, and they taught me, yet they did not tell me what the Bible said." Guys, I'm just, I'm, I don't need, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to let you know. Here, we've got people right here who can tell you. They don't tell you the whole picture. So, you know, as an example, I said this other night, as an example, we don't participate in Lent. We don't pray the rosary. We don't pray to saints. We don't pray to Mary. We don't, we don't pay indulgences to get people out of purgatory. We don't, we don't have a confessional booth. You say, why don't we do that? It's not in the Bible. That's why we don't do it. You say, well, how did all that stuff get in the, in the tradition? Man-made tradition. All these councils that they had. And every time they come along and the Pope speaks with the authority of God. And what he says is, is as important as, as God speaking it and has more authority than, as the Bible, than the Bible. No. No. No, so if the Pope, the Pope now is deciding that the LGBTQ community needs to, needs to be legalized and, and made wide open. You think that's come out of the Bible? No. no. A person is saved by trusting Jesus Christ for their salvation plus nothing. Amen. Now, if I get this wrong, you can correct me. The Catholic Church teaches you need Jesus to be saved and... And and the and goes and keep the seven sacraments and follow the church's commandments and follow what the Pope and the and do this and and I mean it, it's just on and on and we, listen let me get off the Catholics for a minute and we got Baptist churches that do basically the same thing 
They tell you, you you need to be saved and you need to accept Jesus, but then you need to do this or you need to do that. Listen, folks, preach it like it is. Salvation is Jesus plus nothing. Anything you add to the salvation process that you have to do, you have just destroyed salvation and made it a false gospel. I don't care what it is. I remember one time I, I come out. Of, I, I've been in the Baptist church. I come out. I mean, I've asked people down through the years just to see. And I knew what they would say. Do you have to be a member of a church to go to heaven? Oh, and at him and Hall. And I, they already told me their answer. You have to be a member. When you get saved, you become a, a member of the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. And listen, you're in the you're in that church. Then you ought to be in a local church. Yes, you should be in a local church. But being in a local church is not going to get you to heaven. There are a lot of people who are good church members that have never been saved. Probably some of you all were probably pretty good Catholics. That won't get you to heaven. Being a good Baptist won't get you to heaven. If you've never been saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 4, by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of of God, not of works, lest any man should what? Boast. And that's exactly what they do. We know churches, we won't call them by name, whose, whose, whose bylaws are, are on the same level as this Bible right here. Well, church bylaws ought to come out of the Bible, but church bylaws don't trump the Bible. We've got a bylaw book. I think maybe we've thrown it away now. Because right here's the big bylaw book. And I, I told them when we, when we made our bylaws, that the Bible will trump every bylaw that you want to come up with. It better be according to this Bible. Well, our, our church bylaws, I don't care, give a hoot what your church bylaws say. Well, you know, our church says you've got to be baptized and be a member of the church and you've got to take communion. You've got to do all this stuff. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You gotta, where does it stop? It's no wonder people are confused today and people are dying and going to hell. The devil's done a great, great job of confusing people. He's confused the masses. And I'm not talking about the Catholic mass. That'd be another topic. But I mean, he has confused the people. And he's got, he's got people just run again, again, if you're on Facebook, if you want to get on it, go to that real section and put them, see if some of that stuff starts to come. If you can see some, I'm not kidding you. Yesterday, it was like three or four reels about the solar eclipse compared to a reel about something. I thought, man, I don't want to keep seeing these because it was all, and like I said, I saw one guy and I had to listen to him about two times. I said, I'm going to listen to that again, make sure he's, he's. And he was pretty much on target. But everybody else was sensationalizing it. And because they're coming, it's coming across Nineveh, a town's called Nineveh, and these places. And the last time it comes through Salem, and it's making an X in the, in the center of the United States. And, and, you know, it's going to be dark for three days. It's probably going to be a little bit dark for a while. Yeah, when the sun, when you turn the sun ball off, it's going to be a little bit dark. I can't imagine it's going to be dark for three days. And they're going to be, you know, then, then the stores are not going to, the food chain is going to be messed up. The animal system is going to be messed up. Everything's going to be going crazy because everything's going to, we just had one of these seven years ago. We just had one seven, I took my kids out of, I was teaching at Osceola Middle School. We went right outside and looked at it. This was not sensation. Maybe it was. I didn't know. Eddie, you'd probably been more on the know on that. It wasn't as sensationalized as this one is, was it? I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great deal. You ought to go out and look at it. Don't burn your eyeballs up. If you get out of the house without, you know, you don't want somebody to come in and get you. The, the, the booger man come and get you during that eclipse. But I mean, it's something to see. Yeah, it's something God has put up there and, and God's in control. But all this other stuff that they're adding to it, wow. I believe, I believe. Can you tell I'm worked up? I believe that a part of the great end times deception includes religion and the Catholic Church and other religions. They're neck deep in it. 
They're neck deep in it. I mean, think about some of the stuff you're seeing and hearing. I mean, my goodness gracious. Years ago, I'm telling you, let me talk about Wow. I got, always had to break it down. We've been here 11 years, going 11 years. 20, 25 years. Remember Dallas when Dallas came? Dallas had come from Lincoln County, West Virginia, right out of the country, the heart of West Virginia, and moved up there where we were and had gone to a Methodist church. And it was, it was, it was, uh, Ash Wednesday. And man, they got the ashes out and started calling people up, come up, putting that, 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 that X or that T on, on their head. Like to scare him to death. Man, he got out of there and found our church. He said, man, I wouldn't stand around that. That's in the Methodist church. Can you, can I tell you why the Methodist church has done that? Because they're tied into the Catholic church. Can I tell you why these other churches are doing that? Because they're tied into the Catholic church. Because I told you the other night, the Catholic Church thinks she's the mother church of all these other Protestant denominations. And their the influence is far-reaching. Methodists today, the modern Methodist movement is not much different than the Catholic Church. Lutherans, Presbyterians, Anglicans. They're, they're all they're, the Episcopalians. They've all followed suit. They're all going back to the mother church of Rome, it looks like. And, and so I just have to say, let me read this verse to you, 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. There's another warning that, hey, Satan and his mob and his crew, they don't come in to beat the snot out of you right now. They're not coming in to kill you in the church age. They're coming in to deceive you. And his preachers and his false angels and his false apostles, they're not coming in saying, hey, I'm of the devil. No. No, they're coming in. I tell you what, they're coming in saying people like me, you're of the devil. They're coming in turning the rest. No, there's the devil right there. When we're using the Bible, and they're twisting the scriptures to try to try to make merchandise of people. Well, remember all the lies and deceptions have to have an element of truth in them, or people wouldn't believe them. If it was a flat out lie, you wouldn't believe it. I was working in coal mines one time. Coal mines, it was terrible. I'm probably the same way on a on a on a ship out in the sea. A rumor would get started, and man, it would just spread like wildfire. Probably like in the school system, you know. And this guy one time, it was so funny. He started a rumor that the coal, that our coal company was going to shut down. And it went through the coal mine and come back around to him. And he was alarmed and shocked when he heard it. And he's the guy that started it. <laughs> I said, you're the guy, you're the, he's the guy that you started the rumor. And by the time it had made its way and circled back around, he was shocked and alarmed. We're shutting down. I said, you started that. But, you know, man, oh, man, oh. If you remember, and I'm going to take you back to 1960. Now, Madison's thinking, can I go back to 1960? <laughs> no. Most of us can. JFK ran for president. And they were concerned about one main thing. What was it? That he was a Catholic. Because they didn't have... Catholic, at that time... Catholics were not out there in the public. They were not running for political office. They certainly not run up for, for the president of the United States. And they were concerned because JFK was a Catholic. And guess what he won? Today, 60 years later, the majority of TV on, uh, people on TV, the majority of your news commentators, the majority of people that you see who say they're Christian, they're, they really identify with the Catholic Church. There was a time, I'll say, I'm, I know I'm, look like I'm hung up on this. There was a time when Bible believing Christians, Bible believing scholars and theologians, they just flat out called the, the Roman Catholic Church a, a false religion because they taught a false way to be saved. Anybody, if, if you're a Baptist church and you teach a false way, you're a false, that's a false religion. But today, I, I looked up, I looked up, I think it was this morning, as of, 2021, I start to say 1921. As of 2021, 
there, there were 158 members of Congress that were that are Catholics. The majority of, of I looked at a, at a breakdown of it. Catholics far supersede anybody else that's on the political spectrum. I think I could say this and, and be safe, and I'm not trying to be mean. Rome's trying to take over. They're doing a pretty good job at it, amen? Six out of the nine Supreme Court justices are Catholic. Wow, think about that. So, so you say, well, back on the hallowed prayer. What's the underlying message? I believe, I believe, I, I believe, you don't have to believe this, and I shouldn't have said that one. If you want to use it, that's your decision, not mine. I'm not going to use it. I, I believe that one of the parts of this is that it's, it's a part of the one world religion that's deceiving people and pulling people back into the Catholic Church. If you think the Catholic Church was happy when the Protestants broke off from them, you don't know much about history. And it's been a battle since. Money. It's money and a battle to try to bring them back. And by goodness gracious, they're bringing them back. The Catholic influence is everywhere. Amen. So if you're born again Christian and you need a prayer app to help you pray, what do you say? You got a problem. Can I, I'm going to go one step further than that. Maybe you've never really been saved. Maybe, I don't have the problem about reading a prayer or reading a book that's got prayers in it or but if you need a prayer app and a Catholic app to, to teach you how to pray, there's a problem with that. I had a guy one time, and this was a very educated guy, very knowledgeable. If I told you what he did, I don't want to say it because it would, it would rat him out. But he got saved, and he was sincere. He, didn't, he knew not, he, was, he was 50, 60 years old, and knew nothing, nothing about the Bible, nothing. Been in the Methodist church, supposed to be in the Methodist church, all, Methodist church, always knew nothing about the Bible. Got saved, started coming to our church. I preached one night about the Old Testament and the New Testament. I got home, I got a phone call. He said, hey, I got to ask you a question. I'm talking about an educated guy who had a big, high paying job, owned his own business. He said, I got to ask you a question. I said, what did, he said, what did, what did you mean when you said Old Testament and New Testament? I said, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> He said, I, he said, I'm being honest with you. I don't know what you meant by that. He said, I don't know anything about And And again, that taught me something that people that get saved and come in, they don't understand. They don't understand. Can you imagine some of these people that's walking in on Sunday night into the book of Revelation? It's no wonder I'm going to the snail's clip, you know, because, man, you, you fire all that out and they're going, wow. They don't understand religious terminology. They don't understand the Bible. They don't, don't, they don't have a part of it. So, man, listen, if you have to have a prayer app on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer to help you pray to Jesus, you've got a problem. Houston, there's a problem. Because you know why? Because look, guess, as born-again Christians, we have a personal relationship with Jesus. Now, this guy's telling you about it. I got off track. This guy's telling you about it. That didn't know the difference between the Old and New Testament. We'd go out and eat, and he traveled with me a lot. And man, I loved him. I mean, he and he grew by leaps and bounds. But he couldn't he couldn't pray. I, he didn't know anything. He didn't know anything about prayer. And we would go out to eat, and he would want to pray. And he said, and he would tell me, he said, I wrote my prayer down. Can I read it? You know what I told him? Absolutely, because you know what? he was doing it sincerely. Out of the sincerity of his heart, and he pull, he'd get a little piece of paper out of and 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 read his prayer, and it was sincere. What a thing wrong with that! But if you've got to have a prayer app for you to talk to Jesus and to pray to Jesus, I will tell you when you talk to Jesus best is when trouble comes. You might not be have, if you don't have any trouble, you might be trying to figure out all those fancy words and all those big biblical words. And I don't know how to pray, but I'm going to tell you when trouble comes, it's, oh God, you can pray when trouble comes. Right. Amen. We've got the Holy Spirit living inside of us. No amount of rituals, rites, rules, regulations, or religion can save you. Only a personal relationship. 
That's why we go through that plan of salvation. Major took time on Sunday morning. Go through it again. Because there are people that said, don't know how to be saved. Can you be saved without going through a plan of salvation? Absolutely. But when you get out that door, you need to know that you had the Bible given to you, the Bible plan, how to be saved. Sure, if you open your heart up, but the devil will say, you didn't do it. When the devil tells me you didn't get saved, I say, I did what the Bible said. I did what the Bible said. And that's what saves you. No, my, my plea to you today is to filter everything through the Bible. So here's another current event thing that we're, that we're going to talk about here for just a minute. And I've been talking about it. It's the great American eclipse that's going to happen in 2004. I just want to say to you, don't be driven by fear and don't be overly anxious about what everybody's saying. I really probably feel like I probably need to talk about it. Maybe next week or maybe next Wednesday. I don't know because there's so much hype about it. But, uh, wow, it's, it's just, people, people are taking the Bible. You, here's a good statement. Here's a good statement. You don't interpret the Bible and Bible prophecy through current events. If that be the case, Hitler would have been the Antichrist back in the 40s. Stalin would have been the Antichrist. Ronald Reagan might have been that. You know, they figured out a number, come up with the number, he was Antichrist. Obama. Uh, Obama they, you know, they come, they come up with all this stuff, all this stuff. Uh, who was the guy? Who, Henry Kissinger. They said, oh, he's the Antichrist. You know, they, they, they come you, Do current events play into the Bible? Absolutely. I love current events. But you don't judge the Bible and, 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 and take the Bible and, and run it through current events. You take current events and run it through the Bible. Does that make sense? You don't take current events and hang it out there and try to, that's what people are doing with this solar eclipse. They're taking, they're taking a solar eclipse and trying to run the Bible through it. Instead of taking the Bible and running a solar eclipse through it, and letting the Bible filter out all that garbage, they're taking the solar eclipse and running the Bible through it and then picking it. They're cherry picking. You know what that means to cherry pick? Yeah. Playing basketball, that's an easy shot. So that, they're, they're, they're cherry picking Bible verses that three days of darkness, they're going back in, they're going back in the plagues of Moses coming out of Israel, out of, I mean, out of Egypt. Something they're saying it's the fifth seal. I just taught on the seal judgments. The fifth seal had nothing to do with that. So I mean, we got all that stuff going on, but they're trying to they're trying to filter the Bible through current events. You filter current events through the Bible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Jesus said, "Man, look out, look out! You ought to be able to see something's going on. Absolutely, is something." Look out there with all the craziness and all the current events, the, the, the spectacles out there. And every day, it seems like every day somebody's coming up with something new that it's the end of the world. Well, they, I've been preaching on that for a long time. It's going to happen. The rapture is going to happen, but it's going to happen the way the Bible says, and it's going to happen the way Jesus says, and when he says it's going to happen. Not by you or me saying it's going to happen. So don't get caught up in all the hype. Be cautious about all those things. Because if, if not, if not, you'll be wringing your hands. You'll be like that, that lady that sent Kathy a message. And it's not anybody that you know. So don't sit there and think who was or wonder who it was. It's not anybody in our church. It's somebody from another place that sent Kathy a message. And just, you could almost, you the, 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 Frightfulness in in that text. Just scared to totally. I'm not, not going to work. I'm going to stay home. I'm going in fact, not staying home. I'm going to stay with my family. I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the house. Why? Please be cautious about all that. And then, uh, then I want to say one more time as we get ready to close out. Then, because this keeps coming up too uh, on social media. Then you got Elevation Church with Stephen Furtick. That's based out of North Carolina. Magus, I think that's, I heard of 25,000 people there last Sunday, I think, with him and his campuses and all the people that they're hitting on. 25,000 people. And yet they say to him, they're promoting their Easter service. We're not going to mention the, the resurrection or the cross or the blood because we don't, we, we're, trying to, we're trying to reach people where they don't want to offend people. 
What are we? Tr- what are we trying to do? Wow, it, it, it's just Charlottesville. Charlatan. It's it's disheartening to me. I've been in the ministry forty six years. It's disheartening to me. It, it, it seems like it 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 appears by looking at the world we're taking a step forward and two steps back. As I said, I'm gonna start out. I'm gonna finish up here in a minute with what I started with. There there have always been more false prophets than there have been true prophets. So we don't measure we don't measure preachers by their popularity. We don't measure measure preachers by how big their building is. We don't measure them by how much their bank account has in it. We don't measure them by how many homes they have or how many helicopters and planes they have, how much their suits cost, how much their ties cost, how much their their their, their, their dress shirts cost. We don't measure that by that. If we did, if we did, we'd all be in trouble. You measure, this is a measuring stick right here. And I've said this so many times to you, and I don't know if it's doing any good. I don't know if any of us, it's like, I feel like I'm throwing on Teflon and just hitting and just sliding off in the floor. If you're not careful, you listen to stuff and you, you, you grasp a hold of it. And you begin to believe it. And, and again, you, you grab that element of truth. You say, oh, I've heard that in the Bible. I've heard that. That must be. Oh, yeah, I remember the preacher preached on that. But you don't know enough about it to know that no better than to know it's a lie. Right. And then you start telling other people and you start promoting that. And before long, you got half the church that's involved in that. And they're sitting around going, oh, we're, we, we, believe that, we believe this and so on. Don't listen to Stephen Furtick. Don't listen to T.D. Jakes. Don't listen... To uh, Greg Locke. Don't listen to uh, Benny Hinn. Don't listen to Kenneth Copeland. Don't listen to Mike Murdoch. Don't listen to, and I could just go on and on and I don't listen to Andy Stanton. Don't listen to those people. Wow. Wow. Roxanne said, I see a foggy church members on the black TV screen. She's look, looking at, she's watching, seeing, seeing, everybody wave at Roxanne on the screen now. She's seeing your image on that. I have to start hanging a curtain up on that. We can't get it to work. But this, dece- this deception is happening right before our eyes. We're seeing it. We're seeing it happen. And yet, I can't make people believe that it's really happening. They don't believe it. No, no preacher. No, it's not. It's not that bad. No, you're right. It's not that bad. It's worse. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's far worse than what you think it is. So, again, as I said, I taught on Revelation 17 Sunday night on Mystery Babylon. We'll be back on that again here soon. If we're not on a Sunday night, we'll be on it in, in, in a week or two. And, uh, wow. Go back and listen again because it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy out there. I honestly believe we were better off back 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years ago when you when you had when you didn't have all the social media, you didn't have all the T V influence, you didn't have all the platforms that people could get on. You had a church where you had a pastor who was probably probably a born again Bible believing Christian that believed the Bible, just you know, just come and preach for chickens or, you know, for a Sunday dinner and and and, and you know, went home with a, somebody's family and they fed him and, and you know, there's old certain old circuit riding Methodist preachers who just cross the country on horseback preaching the gospel while well, they would just roll over in the grave if they've seen what the, if they could see and know what the Methodist church has turned into today. John Wesley would probably just throw up on himself. Charles Wesley. I mean, because it's, it, but I honestly believe we'd have been, we, we were better off then. We wouldn't have that influence. Major hit it, major hit it right Sunday. Every kid just about has a cell phone or a tablet or a computer. And they get on it, and they watch this stuff, and they, and then they can get on there. They make their TikToks, and they make their YouTube videos. They've got their. Remember, I remember a kid in elementary school. And this been two, three, four years ago now, probably. That was his goal. He was going to be a YouTuber. That was what he. I'm going to be. And he said, "Let me show you." He already. He Ed, He knew what he was. I'm talking about an elementary grade child that knew what he, he knew more than I knew about it. Had everything set up. That's what I'm going to. what I'm going to be. Well, make make me a lot of money. Wow, wow. There are a few people that you can listen to. Very few. There are a few people that you can read after. 
very few. The list is getting slimmer and slimmer. Is that a word, slimmer? Yeah. Slimmer. When Karen Boyd was here, she talked to me, and we talked a couple times. She, she'd ask me, what about so-and-so? I'd say no. She said, I'm throwing stuff and getting rid of it. What about so-and-so? I'd say no. No. If you think, if you got a question about somebody, ask me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Flat, you might not want to hear it. If I tell you flat out, no, don't listen to them. If I don't know, I'll try to search it out because there's a lot of chameleons and charlatans and creeps out there, and they're making, it's a money-making thing. Huh? It's a money-making thing. And and it's not just money-making. They're getting rich. The poor, And the poor people are giving it to them. It's just like the lottery. Who's funding the lottery? The poor people. Who's funding these preachers? You get people that are sick and don't know the Bible. You send me your money. You send me your faith giving. You send me your seed offering. We're going to pray for you. God's going to heal you. What do you think people's going to do? Send you a prayer cloth. Send you something. Send you some anointing oil. Send you holy water. Send you something. Do this and you'll be healed. Then you come back to them and you say, I didn't get healed. And then they say, this is what they say. You didn't have enough faith. It's your fault. Not my fault. Not God's fault. You didn't have enough faith. And then you go away hurting this one. I told you, my little buddy, Trevor. Trevor in, in the wheelchair. You know what I'm talking about? Who went to a church service. Didn't know. Went to a church service a couple weeks ago. Did not know what he was getting into. Called me and said, what about, what, 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 tell me, what, what about, what, what has happened? And this guy was up there slaying people, knocking them down, man. People just passing out. You know, he called them up, man, just knocking them Here's a guy in a wheelchair with a sincere heart that would give everything he's got to walk. Rolled up there to that, rolled up there to that preacher. And that preacher did all that stuff and slapped him in the head and all that stuff. And Trevor said, I did. said it didn't do anything for me. You know what that preacher told him? Go on back to the back of the church. Going back to the back of the church. If there was anybody in that building that needed to be healed, I'm going to tell you who it would have been. I'll tell you who it would have been. It would have been Trevor. The rest of them were actors. Huh? The rest of them were actors. Yeah. If you read, and I know I got to quit, but I'm just wound up. If you read enough about this, there's a, there's a, you especially, you get up there like that, there is a tremendous psychological advantage that they're, that they're pulling on you, that they're having on you. And then the peer pressure, and then you thinking that they're going, you think, and they got actors involved in that, and they got people that's falling out in that. So when they touch you, you're going to fall out because you don't want to be the only, you don't want to be the only one up there not falling out. Stay away from it. You say, preacher, what are you going to do when you get to heaven? I'm going to tell the Lord I preached this right here. And I stayed with this right here. I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't have a lot of of followers. But, Lord, I did what you called me to do. And I tried to tell the truth about it to get people saved. That's what it's all about. Amen. So may God bless you. I hope everything went good today. Hope you get something. There's Jackie Harris on there. Watch Jackie come out of the Catholic Church. There's another good one, buddy. Got out of there and got saved and got in there. Knows right there. So just pray y'all have a great day. Thank you for being with us. And uh, again, apologize that the screen TV wouldn't sync today. Uh, Brenda, I believe that may be what you were talking about. You couldn't see the comments of the screen wouldn't sync. So, but uh, anyhow, we got the lesson out. Hope you got something out of it. Have a great day. We're going to put eggs, candy and eggs in a minute. God bless you.